fucking month old and they're calling themselves an ancient. Yeah, that's right, Indomitus is still a thing that I am working very, very hard on. Still trying to bring you at least one piece of Indomitus content every week until I've got all of my commissions for it out of the way. And this week it's the turn of the Blade Guard Ancient. It's a miniature in the set that I'm actually very, very fond of myself. I really, really like the way it looks, and I also think functionally on the battlefield, especially if you're running those Blade Guard veterans, it's very, very good. So, this is actually a custom colour scheme. It's a Blood Angel successor called the Sanguine Wave, and it involves a, an interesting little sort of vertically halved difference, where the bottom half is a sort of purpley burgundy colour and the top half is a red, and it, it produces a really interesting look. I think you're going to like this one a lot, so let's get to the down cam and start going through this how to paint. Okay, let us dive into this beautiful miniature then, starting off with just some Steinal Res Black Primer through the airbrush. Any old black primer will do, and our first paint will be Mephiston Red. We'll get in here to uh, all of the armor that is above the belt. So this was specific instructions from the customer. This is, as I say, a custom chapter. It's a Blood Angel successor called the Sanguine Wave. So there's gonna be a few sort of slightly odd things with the paint scheme here. But this is what the, the Mephiston looks like when it's blocked in. And then Barak Nar Burgundy for everything below the belt. It's a really nice idea. There's not something that I'm I've ever really seen before just sort of halving a space marine above the belt and below the belt and having two separate colors and the interesting thing is that because we're dealing with both red and burgundy here um, they're colors that don't complement each other really very naturally so we have to think of a clever way to highlight them together to make them work so we're going to start that with the shade scheme that's coming in now i'm actually going to take the baraknar burgundy itself and use that to glaze some shading into the mephiston red this is going to create a relationship between the two. The shadows of the red will be the same as the main surfaces of the burgundy, and that will create a natural marriage between the two. And then I'm going to stop for lunch, and you should probably stop for lunch too, because glazing takes forever. I had a nice bacon brioche, I had two actually, but you can have what you want. But that's what it's going to look like once that Barracknar burgundy is glazed into the Mephiston red. You can see it's a really nice transition, but it is a little bit rough at this stage. So I do just want to take a bit of Mephiston red glaze now and just tidy it back up. So let's just glaze him back out in the opposite direction to pull away from those shadows. Just make it look a little bit nicer. There you go. So you can see now that those transitions are much, much cleaner now, much calmer and look a lot more natural. Now we're going to take uh, just a mixture of Mephiston Red and Barracknar Burgundy and we're actually going to start to glaze this in as a highlight on the Barracknar. So again, this is creating that relationship and um, we're just going to start to build this up in the, you know, the usual areas that you'd build up highlights, uh, just sort of towards the edges and ends of panels and stuff like that. And then we'll start to mix in some squig orange to that equation. So here you are with uh, Barracknar Burgundy and squig orange mixed together. And we'll just start to, again, just pop in some sort of finer highlights here. Then we'll get a bit brighter going up to pure squig orange now. And just tap in a few nice little bright spots. Okay, so this is how the highlights look for the burgundy areas. Very nice, we're all happy. Now we want to continue that relationship that we've developed in the paints. Now I'm going to mix Mephiston Red with some of the uh, Squig Orange, and we're going to start to work up the highlights on the Mephiston Red areas. And again, this is because we're using the same colours as shades and highlights and, and keeping everything sort of interlinked. As you can see, as these highlights start to build up, everything starts to look more natural, like it belongs together. So the purple and the red don't clash as much. This is now some pure squig orange, just to tidy that up a bit further. Lovely jubbly, that's all looking nice and bright. see now we're starting to get a nice clean highlight built up that's looking good 
I want to take it just a spot brighter in a few areas, so I chucked a bit of iron rack skin into my squig orange. I'm going to be using iron rack skin a few times in this workup, so it was just a colour that I had at hand, but any sort of ivory into your orange really we we'll just uh, pull up a few really bright sparkly spots in that orange workup. And there we go. So now things are looking pretty good on the armor panels themselves. I'm pretty happy with them, but we've got a few little pop colors to do now. So we've got Hoeth Blue, first of all, which we're just going to get into uh, one of the knee pads and the shoulder trim. Being fairly careful here because I do have some fully highlighted Barracknar Burgundy just on the top rail of that knee pad. I want to just be careful not to catch that. But once we've spammed that in there and around the shoulder pad trim, it's going to all look very lovely. We're going to thin back some Leviadon Blue. We're going to thin this back to, you know, a sort of wash consistency. And uh, we'll just use this to shade those areas of Hoeth Blue. How are you supposed to pronounce that? Is it Hoeth or Hoth? I don't know. And then now I'm just going to go through a very quick sequence of highlights, just starting with Hoeth Blue and Dragon White from Reaper mixed together and just adding more and more white, getting brighter and brighter. This is barely brighter than Hoeth Blue at this stage. But as you'll see as we go through this workup, we're going to get to a very bright, almost white kind of blue. But that Hoeth does, you know, has like a grey sort of purpley hint to it that just sort of makes it settle a bit nicer. There you go. So we took it up quite bright. And then another pop colour, Slanesh Grey, for another one of the knee pads and the helmet. So we'll get that base coated in very quickly. Starting off with that knee pad again, being careful because the rail at the top is fully highlighted. And then switching onto the helmet. Could be a little bit less careful up here, but you know, you don't want to really catch the um, gorget. Gorget. We'll shade that with some known oil. This is just a quick all over shade. You, you should really just panel line this, but it's such a small area. I just chuck it all over, as you're going to see here. And then uh, we'll come back and sort of fix it up afterwards. If this was going over the whole armor, I definitely would panel line it. I should point that out. Then back to some neat slanesh gray, just to sort of start tidying up those flat surfaces. Get all them tickled in. We'll just start adding some of that uh, that dragon white from Reaper now and just making brighter and brighter highlights, focusing towards the center mass of the face, basically. So I want to create this kind of pinch that apexes around the eyes. There we go, getting all the way up to pure dragon white. That's that final dot there with just the white. And then this is what you're going to get for your troubles. Zoom the lens in a bit here just so that you can see. Use the little super zoom feature on my camera. It's going to, it's a nice smooth transition, but you do want that, that final white highlight. You do want a bit of poke to it. Uh, Zandri Dust Iron Rack Skin and Seraphim Sepia now are going to deal with all the robes and the parchment. The difference between the robes and the parchment is how bright we take them. But to start off with, we just want to get everything base coated in with Zandri Dust. whip through that at lightning speed and unceremoniously slap on that seraphim sepia next that's what everything looks like with the flat zandri though here's the sepia now bop 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 get all of that in nice and sharpish no need to mess around here seraphim sepia is a very forgiving wash And then we'll start with just Zandri Dust to start to build back some of the surface here. But we will eventually develop in highlights by mixing in the Iron Rack skin. So here's the first layer of Zandri mixed with Iron Rack. And then some more Iron Rack added to it. And 
and eventually getting all the way up to pure iron rank. And then as you can see here, I'll start to bring in some of that dragon white. It's, it's the same mixture that I've just used on the robes. I'm just pulling in some white to give another, another level of brightness just to separate those parchments. And that's how it all looks. You can see there's a good strong separation there, especially the parchments that are near the robe. You can really tell that there is a slightly different work up there. Rhinox Hide, Squig Orange and Iron Rack Skin form my worn leather work up this time. I've got a few different versions of this work up, but essentially, you know, you want sort of something in the region of dark brown something in the region of mid orange and then something kind of pale to start lightening it with but here's a, a series of videos me going through that so first of all that's just the rhinox then we start to add some of that orange into it lots of texture here you know be loosey-goosey with it don't try and be too tight with it and then starting to add iron rack into the mixture. That's gonna look real pretty. Now we get to spam a bunch of Retributor armor all over this lovely miniature. There is loads of gold on this. You certainly could do certain parts of this in different colors, but I really liked the idea of just having a ton of gold. And there you are, those are all the areas that I decided to base coat gold. You'll note that I left that skeleton black as well. I wanted to be able to work up from black with that. Raikland Flesh Shade is going to give us some definition to all that gold. And again, no need for ceremony, just get it in there. All those gold areas, everything gets a, a coat of Raikland, and that's how that's going to then look. Now we're going to take a break from those golds for a second now. We're going to pop over to some dark aluminium from Vallejo Metal Color. If you're not, if this isn't in your arsenal, I really do heavily recommend it. It's such a wonderful paint. It just applies so cleanly over black. It looks absolutely beautiful. We'll get all of our silvers knocked in now. Then a quick shade of Nuln Oil. I am sort of whizzing through this a little bit just because it's very common workups that you've probably done before. You probably don't need my help to know how to do these things. And then we'll start to just uh, deal with some of the flat surfaces on the gold areas that have just been darkened a bit too much by the uh, Raikland Flesh Shade. We'll pull them back up with some Liberator um, Retributor Armor and then some Canoptech Alloy. And this is actually going to form a universal highlight on all my metallics, which is something I really like doing because it ties them together. So we're going to highlight bits of the gold and the silver with this Canoptech Alloy and it ends up looking really, really cool. And there you go. So that's all the metallics, basically, as far as I need to take them. There may be a couple of areas where I'll nip back in and tidy up a little bit later, but for the most part, that's the metallics dealt with. So now we'll start work on this skeleton. First of all, I'm just going to get Zandri dust all over it, being really careful to make sure that I get into all of those little hidden cracks and crevices that it has. It has a lot of little gaps and furrows. And then uh, some more of that dark aluminium for the metallics that are on the skeleton as well. I don't actually want these metallics to look exactly the same as the metallics on the main body, but I am starting with the same base colour. The reason I'm doing that is because now what I'm going to be able to do is come across with just some Agrax Earthshade, just on its own, and I'm going to be able to use that to shade both my metallics and the bone at the same time. It's going to make those metallics look a little bit more worn and a little bit more dirty and a little bit more ancient because this is supposed to be, you know, the skeleton of an old space marine. But then it's also going to give us that nice deep shade to the bone, which we can then start to work back up again with some Zandri dust and some iron rack skin. And you'll notice here that whilst I'm using the same colours that I've used elsewhere, I'm focusing far more towards edges and light catching areas and stuff. There's far less surface highlighting going on here. So again, despite the fact that I'm using the same colours, we've got three very distinctly different looking areas all using those same colours. We're coming all the way up to pure iron rack here with just a dot of white added to it. And then once all that's done, this is what you get. I think we can agree that that's pretty cool how you can get some very distinctly different things from the same colors. 
I want to just quickly finish the purity seals now, so I'm going to use Barrett Nar Burgundy for some of them, and Boreal Green from Scale 75 for others, and just kind of randomly distribute them. Dot in a few with Barrett Nar, add in some uh, Iron Rack skin to the Barrett Nar to create a highlight. Dot in a few with the Boreal Green, add in some Iron Rack skin to the Boreal Green to create a highlight. Again, very, very simple painting here. We don't need to show off, they're just purity seals. Take those purity seals quite bright. And uh, just showing you here very briefly as well the uh, shoulder pad that I did. I have freehand videos, but I just wanted to quickly show it. And that is our finished product. We're going to take you through just a few little close-ups here of some areas. A good look at that skeleton there, so that you can see some of the differences going on with that. A nice little focus in on this leather for a second, so you can see all of that deliberate texture that we've put in there. And then just one more look at that shoulder pad as well, just so you can see the way I've done the freehand. That's it. That's a completed Blood Angel successor, Ancient. And there you have it, our Sanguine Wave Blood Angel successor, Blade Guard Ancient. That's a lot of words. There it is. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Sabby K for sending that one in to be painted up for the channel. I hope you like it. I can't wait to send it back to you. Anyway, folks, if you liked this video, please do click that like button that appears here somewhere. Click. Well, no, it, does, it, it appears that there, but, but the... You know what I mean? Just click it. God. And if you like the channel and, and what we're doing and all of that, then subscribe because that helps me get seen. It helps me be visible and I love to be visible, I guess. Of course, you can also pledge to support the channel on Patreon with tiers starting from as little as a dollar and some really, really cool benefits there as well. But until next time, folks, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.